Hello guys, call me Hamster here with my favorite variation the carry phaser beam build. In my opinion, this build has the best balance between survivability and incredible damage in the entire game. Most of the bosses die after one or two skill rotations. Phaser beam has really low cooldown, and while you cast it, you are basically invincible. I've done all the CT15 including Wild of Stone with this build in both solo and co-op play. If you wish to watch me destroy these bosses in one single video, I'm leaving the link in the description. As always, you can copy the build from the cheat sheet instead of listening to my Kokome accent. And meanwhile, and only if you like the content, please subscribe to my channel. So, starting with the skills, we'll be using Heat Pay for debuffing, triggering the anomalous lava class node for 45% of our armor increase and making nice damage. We'll use Feed the Flames to trigger the hot situation node, which will boost our damage by 45% during 10 seconds, which should be active all the time, and to heal ourselves. And we are using Phaser Beam as our main damage skill, but also for healing, buffing and applying Ash to the enemies. As for the class, we are going middle tree, grabbing the wildfire to reduce cool cooldowns, and going up to get the hot situation. Another variation of this build is uh, using thermal bullet instead of feed the flames. In this case, you'll go, uh, you don't have to go up to the hot situation, and you can use these two nodes down here in the in the bottom tree, and you'll have one additional node for an additional skill point for extinction. Finally, the items. We'll use Hair to the Desert as primary weapon, conserving Sandstorm and placing Fortress on the second slot. I'm using Funeral Fire, the secondary weapon, in case my skills are in cooldown, so I can apply a Shadow Comet, but I rarely use it. I prefer just shoot with the Hair of the Desert because it applies Star Sandstorm and does good fire damage by itself. You can use Torment and Agony with Morning Wings and Clip Combustion but as the side up but as a cooldown so the skill are so low, I've actually never used it. We'll be using 3 pieces of the Akari set for the bonus, helmet, chest and pants. For the rest of the items look for Anomaly Power, Status Power, and Cooldown Reduction modifiers. On the helmet we are conserving Fire Tsunami to increase the bits of the hit wave and place Volcanic Armor on the second slot. The skill makes you basically invincible while you are casting Phaser Beam. On the chest we are conserving Tidal Wave for additional Heat Wave and placing Ashen Champion which increases our anomaly power by 20% per affected enemy to a maximum of uh, 100% during 10 seconds. As we will use frequent fire on the gloves, the cooldown of the Phaser Brim is of 5 seconds. It means that this, uh, that this, build, this bonus will be always active. Obviously it depends on how many enemies you have affected with the previous Phaser Beam. On the pants, we are conserving Anomaly Echo for continuous 11.5 Anomaly Boost and placing Captain Hunter for 25% of additional damage to on elites. On the gloves, Frequent Phaser to reduce the cooldown of Phaser and Beam and Burnt Out to debuff the enemies. As it stacks, so we are actually debuffing enemies by 50% more damage during 8 seconds. Finally, Size Mass matters to increase Beam Radius by 100% and Damage Absorber on the boots. Skill Rotation. You start by using Feed the Flames to get the 45% anomaly power boost, you apply Heat Waves on group 1 enemies and Elites and finally Phaser Beam. I'll be able to use uh, one more rotation of Heat Wave and Phaser Beam before you can use Feed the Flames again. That's it! Enjoy this CT15 Draft Palace run and have a great day!